Oh my god, dude. Meteors is here, baby. Meteors is here. What's up, guys? War here, and today I'm finally happy to bring you Meteors, Infinite Meteors, if you want to call it that. Let's try not to die for the video. But we are bringing you a mid-end game Meteor build for Diablo 4 Season 3. I'm going to go ahead and TP out so that way I don't die from all of these effects in here. But I'm so happy to finally bring this to you. We are in day three of the brand new season. Okay, I think I've played, let's see, I played for four hours today, eight the other day, and then six. So I've only played for 18 hours, and I'm level 80. I've just been playing on stream, but we finally got our Starfall, Starfall Coronet, which is the main item for the build from Beast in the Ice. We'll talk about that later. So I'm going to bring you this build. We're going to go over a few things. I'm going to show you guys all the gear pieces that you need. Everything, the skills, the Paragon board up to level 80, and all of the, I guess you could really talk about the little the little nodes and stuff, or the, the runes that we have on our pet, but that's really not going to affect the build too much, so let's get right into this. So, Meteors, okay? A lot of people have been excited about Meteors, especially me as a Sork main, and the build heavily evolves around Starfall Coronet, okay? Now, we're going to talk about a few things when it comes to the gear pieces, but let's go over the skills just really quickly. So we're going to go into the skill showcase here, and we're going to talk about some variations as well. Um, again, the build links, again, everything is going to be down in the description below, but let's go over this. So we got Firebolt. Okay, we're only taking two points because we need this to go into our next thing. Now, I have one point in Fireball, and the reason I have that is because we're doing like open world or overworld farming as well as any nightmare dungeons below 45 at the moment or really like below 40 because we're only 80 so we only have one point in fireball for that because that's going to go into our enchantment slot okay now we'll talk about changes after the end at the end of this but we got one point in potent warding this is just going to help with resistances we got one point in devastation for max mana as well as three into elemental dominance which will just give us even more damage casting above 50 mana then we're taking all of our defensive skills except for Frost Nova. Yes, I know we do not have Frost Nova. The reason we're doing this is because we're taking Ice Blaze, but more on that in a second. So we're taking Flame Shield into Shimmering for more uh, heal. It, you don't need any mana cost reduction with this when you have uh, Starfall. So we're taking Shimmering. Maxing out Teleport here uh, into Shimmering Teleport for more defense. We max out Glass Cannon for more damage, even though we're going to take more. We max out Elemental Attunement because this is Lucky Based Hit. So the 15% chance to reset a defensive skill is going to happen quite frequently, but it only can happen every 10 seconds. So this is really good. Next, we got Ice Armor. I took the extra point in Ice Armor just for Mana Regen. But if you feel like you don't need this, then it's fine. You could take the point out and just max out Teleport. Then we're going to come down to Conjuration. We're taking three points into Precision Magic because this is a Lucky Hit Chance build. 50% more there. One point to align the elements for DR, as well as we're maxing out Mana Shield for damage reduction, as well as protection. For a barrier, we do get some additional bonuses for having barrier, okay? Now, I'm taking a little weird one here with Conjuration Mastery. I've just been testing this. Three points into this because we get increased damage for each active Conjuration. This is just going to be three. Now, we'll talk about some changes to this in a second. If you wanted to get this, we could get this to 6% if we put Ice Blaze into our enchantment slot, okay? If we were to drop Fireball and put Ice Blaze in here, which every 40 seconds in cooldowns, uh, we spend Ice Blaze will spawn on a random enemy. So this is actually really cool because we can get this to about 6%. I don't think I've ever noticed that I've gotten three Conjurations out at the same time, but an extra 6% damage if you want to go that route, you definitely can just drop Fireball, okay? Next, down to our Master Skills, we are maxed to the limit of meteor we got plus 10 we're 15 out of 5 right now for meteor this thing just freaking hits dude so we got uh that into enhance and then we also have wizardry because of the immobilization if you really wanted to come down faster i have tested this you can see that if we throw this in here like it's nice that it comes down a little faster like it's cool that is super strong however we really like the immobilize okay immobilize is really really good this effect is super strong, especially against bosses. You can see the immobilized effect here. 
just proccing. This also helps proc some additional uh, gear piece choices that we have. But if you do want to play around and use just increase and not worry about staggering anybody, you can definitely just have this on here and they'll just fall a lot faster. I've never needed it. The immobilize is just better. Okay, uh, inner flames. We're doing inner flames for pyromancy skills while healthy. We should always be healthy. Then we got six points into devouring blaze. Okay, now this is the other main reason that we want this to be immobilized from meteor. Okay, we deal 42% increased crit strike damage. And then we're gonna, if they're immobilized, it goes to 60. Huge. Okay, big damage boost. Now I am taking while my my minion is just kind of doing his thing. Um, okay, can we reset? So he's not so annoying. Thank you. Okay, so I have firewall here. Okay, we're gonna talk about why we have firewall. Uh, I have one point in this into wizard's firewall for mana regen. You can do mages if you really want. Now, the reason that we have firewall is because the lucky hit chance on firewall is 48%. And this is what's going to help proc our second enchantment slot, which is what the build is based around is Meteor. So on a lucky hit, we have an 8% chance for a Meteor to fall on an enemy. Okay. So we want to proc lucky hits, which we have a 64% chance on Meteor and a 48% chance on Firewall. Now, what's really good about Firewall is because it'll, it, it does a, an entire wall, hence the name. But the dot damage, each time it hits an enemy, it has a chance to proc the lucky hit, which therefore will give us an opportunity on an 8% chance from that lucky hit for a meteor to fall, which is why we have so many falling, okay? So that's the reason I have it. We'll talk about some other choices here in a second. Now, I'm not running an ultimate. There is a reason for this, and I'll explain in just a sec. But then we have Esu's Ferocity for our key passive. Our fire critical strike damage is increased by 25% against enemies above 50% life. And then our crit strike chance is increased by 5% against enemies below 50. So critical strikes that kill enemies or hit a boss grant both for three seconds. This is huge. Combustion also works, but we're doing massive damage. So we want the crit. Um, also, one point about quick, uh, crit, guys, is that firewall as a dot damage dealing build cannot crit okay keep that in mind that's why all of the crit is going to go to meteor just keep that in mind now why aren't we running an ultimate okay so we have four skills here i have flame shield in here uh the reason that we don't have an ultimate is because we're running firewall now if we choose not to run firewall which is fine you can definitely do this there is the cooldown on this skill you cannot run firewall and I would recommend either running Inferno, which while it's active with Supreme Inferno, our Pyromancy skills cost no mana, which means we could just spam Meteor, but that doesn't work because we have a cooldown now. So Pyro, Inferno doesn't work, okay? We would take Deep Freeze. Now I'll show you why we would take Deep Freeze. The reason we take Deep Freeze is because of Supreme. When Deep Freeze ends, your non-ultimate cooldowns are reset. This also applies to our cooldown here for Meteor. So when we hit Meteor, you see we have a four second cooldown. But if we spam and use both, right? Let me grab my skills and get rid of this and we'll put this in here. If we use both, if I, you know, our cooldowns go, right? Our cooldowns go. So we're gonna spam this out if, uh, I'm not on caps. So if we deep freeze, it resets one of them. Okay, you just double tap deep freeze and it resets all of our cooldowns, okay? It's also, it's really, really good that we have that. So let me just bring deep freeze back. Oh, we gotta wait on the cooldown here. It's very, very nice. It's a very neat little trick. You're not using the deep freeze so much for just being immune and chilling enemies. That is nice, but we mainly use it just to reset every single skill no matter what, okay? Now I'm going to talk about why I have firewall, but I want to showcase this really, really quickly for the build. Okay. Cause this is important. So we're going to, we're going to hit all of our skills, right? Proc all our skills, hit everything, deep freeze, everything completely resets and we can just keep blasting. Right. But then we have to wait for our super long cooldown on deep freeze, but it is really, really good. Okay. So let's reset that. Now 
the reason that I didn't opt for this and go to Wizards or excuse me, um, let me just change this. So the reason I decided to do Firewall is because of the cooldown in between. Okay, I love just casting Firewall in between my Meteor uh, sets, as you guys saw in the gameplay at the start of the video. So while I'm casting this, I hit Flame Firewall, and then it's cooling down, cooling down. I can throw another one, and I can just burn with Firewall, right? And then we hit another one, right? I can just do this, and it helps reset all my cooldowns. I have about a three second cooldown on this thing, four seconds, three seconds with ice blades up. It just allows for even more damage that can just be applied to the enemies. And then of course, earlier, as I talked about, we have the chance for the proc for lucky hit to help spawn even more meteors, okay? So that's the reason that I opted for firewall, but you do have a lot of options here that I think are really, really good. Okay, so that's what I would change. Um, if you wanted to make any additional adjustments, all right? But Ice Blades definitely needs to be here. It really helps. If you do not run and run Ice Blades, that is okay. You can use Frost Nova up to Mystical. Now, the reason that I'm running Frost Blades particularly is not only the cooldown on here, but because we have Tal Rashes. And that's a good gateway into our gear choices, okay? So, of course, the build is centered around Starfall Coronet. Okay, we get the cooldown increase, we get the extra ranks to Meteor, we get the lucky hit, but now Meteor has a charge, has two charges, and we got a max roll for six second cooldown instead of mana. So we get two charges, it doesn't cost anything, and drops three additional Meteors. And then our Meteors enchantment effect and enhance Meteor drop one additional. So Meteor's enhancement, Meteor's enhancement, if cast, if a cast of Meteor hits three or more, there's a chance for an additional. So if that triggers, instead of just one, it's two. And then the same thing all on our enchantment here. If the lucky hit goes off and one would fall, two fall instead. So that's why we spawn so many meteors. That's why this build is 100% centered around having um, Starfall Coronet. Now, if you don't have this and you're in the mid game where I am, the mid or mid to late, I call this the mid end game because we're only 80. This is where we start to get some items and the builds are really starting to come together. If you don't have Starfall, that's okay. You can still run Meteor. And if that's the case, what I would do is I would dump Firewall and put the points into um, the ultimate here, which would be Inferno. Because then when you pop Inferno, you can just spam Meteor nonstop for just a few seconds. So that's what I would do if you didn't have the Starfall Coronet, and that's okay. All right, the build the build just centers around having this. So if you don't have it, it's okay, but you need to get this. Next, we have Remnant. We still have a Sacred One. This, is, this isn't this is required for the build. It does add some extra damage with the damage close, the damage is done, and our Glass Cannon, and our Intelligence. If you don't have Remnant, that's okay. I would opt for a chest piece that just has a lot of DR, total armor, and just like fire damage skills or uh, cooldown. So that's what I would opt for in the chest piece. In our gloves, we're doing shattered stars. Meteorites fall around meteor, dealing more damage and then burning them, which therefore will help proc an additional chance for them to fall. Super good for the build. Then we got disobedience, of course, for more armor. Ghost walkers is what I've opted for here in my boots. However, you could swap these out for ASU boots, or you could swap the power for some other movement skill power if you like these. However, I do like it when I teleport and just kind of get around and it just makes it moving and it just makes moving really easy. And when you're unstoppable, it just makes moving through enemies a lot better. So I always love Ghost Walkers. Plus the extra 25% movement is insane. There is a new power that you can get from, it's a new one I think this season where you can get 30% increased movement after you teleport, which is really good which therefore you would swap out teleport into from fireball. Okay, so then that way, when you're doing this, you throw a teleport in here, and every single time your evade comes up, you're just getting an instant teleport. And with our cooldown reduction here, you're gonna be able to just teleport all the time. So it makes it really, really easy. Put this back. We're gonna talk about enhancement parts in the end, at the end. So uh, after that, we have control. Now this is very, 
important early on. So when you're leveling with firewalls or just meteor or both, you can get control here. This is really good because between Frost Nova and your auto stun, this is just a lot of extra damage. However, I am going to be swapping this for Conceited because we're always going to have a barrier. So just the flat damage increase is much better than waiting for a CC effect in order to deal damage after that CC effect is applied. I'll be making that change and it'll also be reflected in the guide. Then, of course, we got three curses. This is the best amulet power here. Increases crit strike damage of meteor and fireball up to 60%, and then it doubles um, if it's if the bonus is against healthy targets, which is just insane. My amulet I got is bonkers. So what you would want is this same exact thing, but you would swap out the defensive skills for cooldown. Then, of course, we got Tal Rashes. So we hit with all three elements. We hit with lightning, ice, and then, of course, fire. So we get an extra 33% increased damage. I'm trying to find a better roll on that. And then for now, which is what I was using during the leveling phase, is Prodigies. Okay, this is what's going to kind of help us. We use Prodigies, especially when we didn't have the helmet because we're spamming a lot. So with all of our cooldowns, this just allows us to be able to keep our mana full. However, once you get to this phase and you're just doing this, I have tested this build exactly with Firewall without Prodigies, and our mana is perfectly fine. So you could swap this to like Elementalist, or you could swap this to maybe Edge, or I don't even know if you can put Edge Masters in here, but you could do something like that, um, which would really, really help. But Elementalist would probably be the one I would put in. In our offhand, we're doing Storm Swell. This is really, really good. Again, it requires us to have a barrier, which will always happen, and then making enemies vulnerable, which we do struggle to do. But this is really good. You could also swap this if you didn't want Storm Swell and put Elementalist here and keep Prodigies if you're having mana issues. Okay. Once we get X Falls, once we get X Falls from Duriel, that's going to take the spot and it's an easy swap out. Okay. Now into our Paragon board. So we only got a few here. We've been just toying around with this, but I'm going to go over just the highlights. We have a uh, control here for just more damage. Okay. Slow, chilled, or stunned, or frozen. More damage there. Then we have um, Adept, Meteor is a mastery skill, huge bonus here. We're also taking the node for Searing Heat. Then we have um, Reinforce for more da damage reduction and a boost to these skills once I get it to 15. And then down here, we just got to Torched, which is just even more burning damage, which is really good. Now, a lot of this can be swapped out. Like I've just been testing with this, but like Dexterity could be swapped out for either flame feeder right now if you wanted to go early on this you could also put in pyromaniac this is also super strong you can also put in exploit for even more damage against vulnerable enemies this is a huge multiplier so i'm just testing with control because as i was leveling i have control and i was just applying those effects so those can be swapped out there's a lot of options here in the paragon board but yeah guys this is the build this is our mid to end game build i have been really enjoying it i've been liking it a lot it is super strong the only thing that you have to get around is the additional play style of this build because of the cooldown now with ice fall or ice blades you can get this down to this is four seconds and it can get to a little bit faster um if you take fireball out again and you put ice blades in here this can be really, really good. You can spawn this even more. You can see it's down to two seconds now. Three seconds cooldown. So you can really just get this thing popping and be able to cast Meteor. You just have to move around a little. Okay, and that's another reason why I like Firewall. Because in between those little cooldowns, I want to be doing something. It kind of sucks just to move around like this and be like, oh, Meteor's back. Meteor's back. All right, all right. Meteor's back. You know, so I wanted to keep some extra damage going and, and do some extra procs. You can see all those meteors are just procking from the firewall. This is all from firewall. We proc those firewalls. All those meteors are from that. And then when we slam it down, build is just so good. So, yeah, guys, this is my mid end game. I want to preface mid end game. Infinite, if you will, or just massive amounts of. Uh, meteors that are on this build it is super strong i will tell you that the build is very very good against just speed farming large groups of mobs um you do lack a little bit in your boss damage 
but the build does just fine okay we really got to get our glyphs up and stuff and i can reflect that later in, a, in our end game video but yeah guys that's the video sorry it took a little long but i've been so excited about this build since i saw the helmet and just wanted to play meteors it's like tower Rasha meteors in a way from diablo 3 so like the video smash the like button comment down below let me know what you guys think let me know what you guys think about the build let me know if you guys have been in playing sork and enjoying it hashtag buff sorks and don't forget to subscribe turn on notifications and as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace